Hello everyone. Welcome to the fifth video of YMUI customization using ADF. In this video, I'll be covering the last part of the project one. So in the project one, we have already covered the create user scenario in the last video. In this video, I'll be showing that how we'll be configuring the manage user scenario, which will consist of modify user operation and disable user operation. And it will give us a search result for a particular organization. So here at the design, in this design, the manage user scenario will have a search page where requester can search for all the identities for ABCD enterprise organization and requester can select one of them and modify their attributes. And once the modification is successful or the modification operation is done, it will redirect them to the confirmation page where they can see the status. So similarly for the disable operation from the search page, Requester can select identity and click on the disable operations to perform the disable activity. So the operation will be performed in the backend and it will display the result in the disable confirmation page. So let's design this uh, uh, page view into the JDeveloper. So in the JDeveloper, the task flow, we have already covered this create user scenario. And now I'll be covering the manage user part. So in this video, I'll be doing the pause in some places Okay, where I need to do the bulk activities and the process process or the procedure that I have already covered in the previous video I will not going to show it in this video just to minimize the length of the video okay so I'm quickly building the design of the page view in the task flow okay I'm pausing the video and I'll resume it back and then I will describe what I have done okay so I have quickly done the design of the manage user scenarios where I have added one view for the search user page a modify form, modify confirmation form, and a disable confirmation form. So, and this control flow case, you can see that from home to search user, from search user to modify form, and from modify form to modify confirmation form, modify confirmation form to back to search user, and uh, from search user to home page, from modify form to home page, and uh, similarly from search user to disable, okay, and then from disable to search user okay so all this control flow case will be added into the button and it will redirect the requester accordingly okay so now we will be modifying this search page okay so as you can see that we have already created the backend component of these activities as a jsff page here so we will open the search user.jsff page a blank page so we'll be designing this page so that requester can search for any identities for a particular organization here so i'm quickly getting some layout from here then i will add show detail header layout here i put the header like And under the legend tag, I will add two button in horizontal view. So for that, I am taking one panel group layout and then adding two buttons, not two, three buttons in under the panel group layout. Okay, so I'll put some spacer, change the design. So all these three buttons, one for modify user, then disable user, and then one button to back from the search page. This one to be vertical, middle, and center. And I will add some uh, spacer mm, in here. Okay. Now 
it will looks like this now after you know modifying this we will be adding a table underneath this button so the table will contain the list of users that uh, uh, we want to or the requester want to modify to view the list of users we need to connect to oim and we need to get the details from the oim database okay so now here we will be configuring the model project now the model project we will connect the oim database and then we retrieve the user information from the oim database and then we'll pass this information to view controller project and display it in this page so how we can do this let's see so in the model project right click on it click on new from the left hand side select connection select database connection so first we will create a connection which will connect our oim database so here provide the details of the connection test the connection it's working click ok so once you click uh, created the connection now you right click on it go to new select adf business components and scroll down and select entity object okay now what is entity object now entity object is a representation of your database table so if you are using a database table in your application you need to connect to the database and you have to represent the table that you want to use so one database table is equal to one entity object so now click ok and here you need to select the connection of the database where you want to connect click ok skip this part So now this uh, create entity object page is opened now here you have to provide the name of the entity object now here i will be connecting the usr table from oim database okay so i can give some name like user eo so eo stands for entity object and the package we already have a default package model now extend the package with something like test Okay, model dot test. So under the test package, my entity object will be created. And now here, the database schema name is dev underscore oim, and you have to put the name of the table. So it is usr. So once you click on next, so it reads all the column from the usr table, and it will create the name like usr last name. Okay, so which you can find as an entity object attribute. Okay, so entity object will be created with these attributes and now all these attributes are mapped with the database table columns the usr table column okay. click on next here you can modify the entity object attributes okay but i don't want to modify it here okay so to keep all these default settings now click on next this is not required click on next and here it will ask for create some additional components now this is the entity object creation page so now once it will be finished it will create an entity object which will represent the usr table now we need to create two more components one is view object and another one is application module so enable the generation of view object and enable the generation of application module now the package name we can keep the same package where we are keeping the entity object and we change the name view view object now what is view object view object is linked with entity object and now once entity object retrieve all the data using view object you can manipulate the data such as you can put such criteria you can put where clause okay you can put the field definitions etc okay so view object is a platform where you can modify the data of entity object and application module is the actually the representation of the view object in a view controller project okay so application module you can say it's a kind of a plugin okay which will retrieve the view object data into your application pages okay 
just like in the search user page we will be adding the application modules output okay as a table so let's keep the name of application module okay so i like to keep the consistency in the naming convention so i put user view for a view object and user am for application module if i click on next and finish okay so this will create package model.test and under this there are three objects entity objects which connect to the database table usr the view object which will be the visual representation of the usr table and the data manipulation and then the user application usr am the application module which will represent this data into the view of uh, view controller project okay. so now if you once it is created okay if you now right click on it okay and click on run so you'll be able to see our uh, java applications will open and it will connect to our database okay and then it will retrieve the users okay so this way you can see all the users from our database okay. now our requirement is to specify the users only from a particular organization abcd enterprise okay now once we created or linked the uh, the usr table it will bring all the data okay but we don't need all the data to display in our application so let's open the user view the view uh, view object the view object the left hand side go to the query you can see a database select query okay which will retrieve all the users now we want to put a where clause which will you know filter out our data set so we put like user eo okay dot SCP key is equals to 21 which is ABCD organization's key and user EO dot USR status in we want to display only the active and disabled user active disabled okay so once it is done you click on test just to make sure that your query is valid okay then you click okay so now as you can see the query is now is having a where clause now when i will see the display data in our application okay so this state this this query will be executed and it will only retrieve the users which matches this where clause criteria okay now let's close uh, okay, save this and close it okay. okay so far our model project is done and we have created these three objects in the model project now how we can add this model project into our search user page once we created the user am application module the application module create its output its output it's represent inside this project as a data control so in the left hand side the data control view okay if you click on refresh and try to search with this uh, name user am data control so it should be here okay so as you can see it creates a new data control for our project from our application module so the data control name is user am data control if you expand it you will see the view object references here okay so now i will use this particular data control and the view object reference to create our table so i'll go to the source okay so after this button and this uh, panel group uh, in uh, in the show detail header i put some space and underneath here i will create the table now how we can create the table so this is the view object representation i will just drag it and drop it here and it will give me an options that how I want to represent this view object in this form okay so my objective is to view it as a 
ADF table and that would be also read only table. So I select table and read only table. So it gives me the list of all the you know attributes. Okay, so we don't need to show all these attributes into the table for searching. Okay, so we will show some basic attributes here and we will delete all others. Okay, so let me pause the video and let me select and delete all other attributes because I need to do this deletion one by one. It will take some time and I will resume it back and then I will describe what I have done. Okay, so I have deleted all the attributes that we don't need to uh, display in this page. So we kept only first name, last name, user login, employee type and status. So we can rearrange these fields. Let's say I will show the user login at the beginning and then I will show the first name, then last name, type and then status. Okay. And now there are some properties that you can select. First of all, I want that requester can select a single row at a time from the table and the table should be filter enabled and sorting enabled. Now I click on OK. So once I click on OK, so it's creating the table. As you can see, the mouse cursor is blinking. Okay, so now the table has been created with the data here. Okay, and as you can see that uh, it, this table has some properties which are selected like the row selection is single and filter visible is true something like this okay so now if you go to the design view you will be able to see the table is now created like this okay so you can also change the header of each column so as you can see that header of each column is taken from the view controller or the so not sorry uh, not the view controller the view object okay so it is taking the default name of the view object level okay so now you can change it according to your own uh, text so for each column go to the header text and change the name according to your requirement so for here it's like user login i put and uh, here i put first name here last name so type status okay now, all the oh, sorry this one was, So now all headers are not changed. Okay. So now this search page is done. So now we need to uh, modify the other pages. Okay. So now, now we will modify this modify form page, modify confirmation page and disable confirmation page. These three page design are exactly this similar like uh, the create new user page and create confirmation page so i'm pausing the video i'm modifying these three pages and then i'll resume it and describe that what i have done okay so i have designed all three pages the first one is the modify form which looks almost similar to the create new registration form where i have added one extra field which is user login because i would like to display the user login in read only mode so that people or the requester can identify okay so this user i'm changing okay so i put the user login in uh, read only mode because i don't want the requester should change the user login because the user login will be changed by the system or modified by the system based on the first name and last name given and all other attributes are editable okay it is pretty similar to the create user page now we have two buttons modify and cancel modify will redirect the user to the next page which uh, which is the modify confirmation page and cancel will redirect to the previous page which is a search page the modify confirmation page we have one field status read only and then we have the close button and the close button will redirect the user or the requester to the search page and similarly we have the disable confirmation page once people uh, requester will click on the disable button from the search page 
the selected users will be disabled in the backend and it will display the status of the operation okay and the close button will redirect the request to the search page once again okay so all three pages are now modified okay so from the ui perspective this is done so now we will be creating the backend controller okay so for the backend controller earlier we have created a create bin one managed bin for the create operations now i would like to create one more java class for all the manage user operation and i'll be adding this java class as a another managed bin into this task flow so right click on it click new click on java class given name manage user okay click ok so this class file has been created now i will go to the task flow overview and the manage bin the create bin is already here so i'm adding one more bin i give a name manage user bin and then Now the scope would be page flow. Now save. Now this new Java class has been added as a another managed bin in the task flow. Now I'll go to this Java file. Now first I will create all the variables, the variables that we can we will use into these forms and all the uh, text field and the other type of fields. Okay. So these are the variables that we need. Okay. So we have user login, first name, last name, manager, user type, country. And this is the extra variable that I, uh, I am, you know, I will consider here because this is a modify operation and modify operation required user key in OIM APIs. And then we have two confirmation page, one for modification status and one for disable status. Okay. So let's create the accessors for all the variables. Okay. So now the accessors are all created. Okay. So. I have already added a couple of methods into the OIM utils just to speed up this video. Okay, so in the OIM utils, I have uh, added the method for modify user. This is the method for modify user, okay, which accept the user key, the user which will be modified, and these are all the attributes for modification. And then I have added a disable user uh, method, okay. So now let's uh, build the functionalities for the buttons. Okay, first go to the search user JSFF page where we have three buttons. Okay, modify user, disable user, send back. Back does not require any backend functionality. Now we need first we'll create the backend functionality for modify user. Okay, so I will create, click on the modify user, and then I first I select the action now. Once someone will click on the modify user, it will take them to the uh, search to modify the modify page. Okay, along with the data. So now in the action listener, I create the method under the manage bin user. Modify user AL. Now let's go to the manage user bin. Sorry. Manage user dot Java and underneath this method has been created. So from here, what I will do, I will call the modify user operations, modify user method from OIM utils. Okay. So I will call instantiate OIM utils. So what you can do that if we need these OIM utils to be used many times, then we can make it uh, in the global. 
so anywhere we can so whenever this class will be instantiated so we will have this object available throughout this class dot modify user first it requires user key ah sorry so uh, this modify user uh, you know modify users will not actually going to modify because this will uh, take the uh, requester to the next page with the data so it was my mistake so it's 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 not this method will not going to modify any user so this method will actually you know retrieve the data uh, which is been selected by the end user or by the requester okay so if i check the search user.jsff okay so this is the table okay so in this table people or the re requester can search for the identity and now requester needs to select one identity and then the requester will click on the modify user so modify user will do what modify user will read the selected records and then it will retrieve the identity information and send it to the next page for modification okay so once we added this table okay so this table creates some bindings okay so if you go to the binding details of the page so you can see what are the bindings has been added so we have one binding added for the table and binding contains an iterator iterator is a repeated task of the binding so which will have the the view object details or the binding details okay or the binding component details okay which we can use inside our java code so we will be using this uh, binding iterators okay which is executables okay so this binding iterators in our java code okay to retrieve the selected records by the requester okay so let's see how we can do that i will go to the manage user.java okay so here i will be using some adf apis to achieve this functionality okay so first i will uh, put dc binding container okay so that i can i give a name like binding equals to and now this will be uh binding context dot okay so enter it will be oracle adf model then we'll just get current dot get current bindings entries okay so it will return all the binding entries okay in from the current uh, JSFF okay fragment. Now it shows the red, so that means we need to type cast it with the binding containers, something like this. Okay, now it's done. Now after we get all the binding entries, we need to find out the specific binding based on name. Okay, so we need to find out the iterator binding. So for that, DC iterator binding iterator would be this uh, binding dot find um, iterator binding okay and we have to keep the name here okay so the name of the binding uh, we can get from the search user jsf page this executables okay so the binding executables is the binding iterator okay so now if i click on this pencil icon modify that this is the iterator id so we copy this okay so and now we will paste it here okay now once we get the binding iterator so now from binding iterator we can get the view object details now the view object that we have created in the model project we can retrieve this view object details in our java code okay. so we put view object class and put like view and it would be from the iterator so now this one must be oracle.jbo iterator dot get view object okay now this view object contains all the rows 
okay the rows of the table and it also contains the currently selected rows because this is the view object which has been initiated from this jsff in the current session now this view object will have all the session related attributes for the table okay so in this table the end user or the requester select one attribute or one particular row so this particular selected rows will be saved inside this view object so we can retrieve that row information so for that we have to get or uh, call the row class this is also oracle jbo let's say row equals to vo dot uh, get uh, current row okay so now this will give the selected rows D. okay so now this contains all the value of the row or all the value of that record okay now we have to retrieve what the records one by one okay now the objective is to in the modify form we need to set the data okay so that once requester will come to this page the requester will be able to see all the existing data for that identity the selected identity okay now let's set all these uh, uh, field data through our variables okay so first is set user login okay so now the set user login we put row dot get attribute and then we have to put the attribute name now uh, the question is from where we will get this attribute name this attribute name is not the usr table attribute like usr underscore login okay because we are calling the view object and this has to be the view object attribute name so to get this uh, view object attribute name you open or double click the user view.xml okay and you go to the java and you generate some java class from out of this view object okay you click on this edit button click on generate view row class okay so once we include accessors okay so now once we generate this class it will generate the user view row impl.java class okay which will contains all the uh, attribute names and details which are used inside the view object so as you can see under this user view we have that user view row impl.java now if i open this i will get the whatever the attribute has been used okay all of these attributes details and their index okay we can get it here okay so instead of uh, you know giving the name okay so we can use the index of all these attributes okay so what we can do here we just copy the name of the class okay close the class we don't need it anymore and we go to the manage user okay so row dot get attributes here in the name we will put the index of the view object attribute so you put user view impl dot the index of the attribute so the attribute name would be usr login okay so now this operations returns the object okay now we have to convert this object to string okay now we set the user login for next page so similarly we have to set uh, the attributes value for the other attributes okay i'm quickly doing it and by the time i'm just pausing the video okay so we have added all the uh, fields for the next page okay so we have added the user login first name last name and for the manager the manager returns the manager key if we search in the usr table it gives the manager key okay so we need to convert this manager key with the manager user login so I have added one class one uh, sorry one method in yumutil class okay so which is the uh, get user login okay from user key okay so as you can see if i go to yumutils underneath get user login okay which will return the user login if you pass the user key as the parameter okay. so if i go to the manage user once again so i'm calling that uh, method to get the manager user login from manager key and apart from that I, I have added user type country and also the user key as one of the hidden variable because this variable we are not displaying in the page because we need the user key once we uh, call the modify user operations 
okay and i put into the try catch okay so for now this modify user al is uh, uh, defined or it's uh, done okay so once this method will be created it will redirect the request to the next page with all the attributes now let's go to the next page modify form so here we will be having all the form values okay so for that for each fields we have to add the variables that we have created under the manage user bin okay so from in the manage user bin we have created the variable called user login but now we have to add this user login x as an expression so that it will bind with that variable okay so let me open from the property window the value expression builder kdf manage bin page flow scope now i'm not going to create uh, select the create bin but i will select the manage user bin and from here user login okay so now this has been added so similarly i will add for the others okay so now i'll quickly add and for the timing i will just pause the video so we have added all the field expression and these fields are now all bind with the java variables so we have also bind the confirmation modify confirmation uh, page status variable and disable confirmation page uh, status variable bind with the uh, attributes that we have added in manage user dot java now the next step is to create the uh, you know the action method for this modify button so let's say now the requester is landed into this page with all this uh, where he can he or she can all see the existing attributes value now they uh, modify one of these attributes now they need to create click on this modify button so that will modify the identities in the backend okay and it will redirect the users to the next page the redirection is already been added here as you can see the action is uh, mentioned and now i have to add the action listener this uh, action listener will modify the users so i want to give the name like modify submit operation modify submit al okay and this cancel button is also mapped with the search page redirection okay so now the action listener for modify button has been created so now let's change the method so here what i will do i have already created this global class util okay and okay so here i can find okay i have added by mistake the over here so we don't need to add it because we have already added this the utils okay now here in the modify submit al what we will do we will just simply call the modify user operation and here we get the user key from this get user key method usr key okay uh, sorry usr okay k is okay, k must be caps and then first name get first name get first name User type get country and then get manager. Okay, you must be capital. Okay, so now once we modify the user, this method will return me the status either success or failure. Okay, so I'm getting the value. So as a return value and it's a string so i store this value in the status field and now i will set the status uh, ui field in the next page from okay so it is like modify status and here i will add okay uh, let me see what was the variable it's a uh, modify 
set modify status okay let's modify status and inside of it i will put uh, the uh, user login get user login and modification status and then i will put like status okay this is the definition we are this is the status attribute will be displayed in the next page okay so now this is done the modification operation is done so similarly we have to uh, do it for the disable operation page so for, for the modification operation is done okay now for the disable operations what the requester will do requester will select the identity click on disable it will disable the identity for oim and it will show the status in the next page so first uh, you set the action it will be from search to disable so it will go to the next page and now add the action listener method that the manage user bin adding the method disable al okay, done now in the manage user bin so we have this method created now we also have to do the same thing that we have done for the modification so in the modification we first get the list of uh, the, the currently selected row okay so the same thing we have to do it for the disable operation okay so i'm just copying these uh, four lines okay and i'm pasting it here so this will give me the current selected row in here and from here i will call the disable operation method in by calling the oim util class disable user and here i need to pass user login okay so the user login i will get it from this row okay so row dot get attribute the int value so here i will pass the user view row impl dot user login okay and this i will change it to string done and this disable user also return the status sorry okay now i will add this status for the next page field status field okay set disable status with get user login I put like termination status okay. so our project is done so we have done the uh, disable action list okay now what we can do is here uh, uh, let's go to the search page once again okay so here as you can see that you know this table will display all the active users and the disabled user both okay so now i'm giving the proportion that requester can select a record and then they click on the either modify or disable operations now what will happen if the requester select one disabled record the record which is already disabled and then again click the disable button so disabled record cannot be disabled further so what we can do here we can put some validation okay so we can put some validation before we uh, actually call the disable operation okay so here we got the row okay so in the row from the row we can get uh, the user login so similar to the user login we can also get the status okay so let's uh, put a string usr status and it will be like row dot get attribute uh, user view row impl dot usr status dot to string okay so now what i have done i 
get the status of the uh, record, the one that has been selected by the end user. But I will just match the status. Okay. So if the status is already disabled, status dot equal ignore case disabled. Then what I will do? I will simply set the disable status message in the next page. Selected record is already disabled. Okay. And in the else in the else part, I will do the final uh, the actual disable operations. Okay. So I'm copying it and pasting it here okay so now what you can see from here so we have put some validation if the status the selected uh, record status is already in disabled state okay so i'm not performing the disable operation once again otherwise it will throw an exception so what i'm doing it i'm just redirecting the users to the next page and showing the status that selected record is already disabled okay and if the uh, you know the selected record is not disabled it's active then it will you know disable the record so so far our project is done so now i will uh, deploy this project into oim okay and then i will restart the server and then i will show you that how it looks like after the deployment so before we go for the deployment uh, one final change that we need to uh, we need to do okay so once we did the model project, we have created the uh, user AM, the application model. If I double click onto it, okay, if I go to the configuration, this user AM will connect to the database. So now this user AM will have the database connection. So if I go to the configuration, you can see there are two connection objects. You can, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, displaying here. So if you click on that, any one of it, okay. So here is an option, what you can, you know choose you can either choose as a jdbc url or you can choose as a jdbc data source okay so you can find there are two so uh, the recommendation is okay so you delete one because once you create the application model by default it creates two so you delete one and keep only one okay and change this um, uh, configuration with a jdbc data source because if you keep the jdbc url okay so your oim once you deploy it into the oim oim will not be able to identify the connections and its name okay so we have to put the jdbc data source from the jdevelop uh, from the uh, web logic console okay so uh, i can show you that what uh, uh, you know value you can put it here you open the you know web logic console then you go to the data source and then you find that uh, the name of the data source which is only deployed in oim server so the first data source we can see which is deployed in oim server even that this one is only deployed in oim server even this one okay so take one of them okay so i'm just taking the first one which is deployed in the oim server i'm copying the jndi name okay and i go to the j developer and the application module configuration section I double click on the user local uh, user am local and jdbc source and here i'm pasting this Okay, now click on OK and click on Save. Okay, so now it's done. So now I will be deploying or building this project with the uh, as a ADF library. Then I will deploy this project and we'll restart the server. So I'm pausing this video. Once I will restart the server, I will resume it and show you the result. Okay, so I have restarted the servers. So before I was restarting, okay, so I found that I made a small mistakes. So I just quickly rectify that one. So the mistake that I made is uh, I just forgot to mention one uh, control flow link from the home page. So from the home page, if you see the manage user button, if someone will click the manage user button, it should redirect the users to the search page. So we had that uh, control link. Uh, home to search so i forgot to mention that okay so just just before i was restarting the server i just realized it and then i check 
and I found that this is a mistake that I made. So I just added it and then I rebuild the project once again and I deploy it and restart it. So now let's see that after we deploy this project, uh, how it looks like in OIM. Okay. okay. So in previously, uh, when we prepared the project or when we started with the project, so we created the sandbox, but I didn't publish that sandbox yet. So the recommendation is once you are completely done with your project, then finally you publish the sandbox for activating the changes permanently. Okay. So I'm for now still I'm activating the sandbox. Okay. And let's see that how it looks like. Once I activate the sandbox, you can see that the the tile is uh, visible here. I click on the tile. So we have two buttons. So this button we already covered. Now this button we should check. Now click on the manage user. It takes me to the page where it gave me all the results. Okay. The users from ABCD enterprise organization. So you can see the search uh, filter here. Okay. Uh, on top. So you can search for any particular uh, records. Okay, so for example, we have uh, three disabled record, one active record. Okay, let's say I want to search for the active records. Okay, I click on. and if I click enter, okay, so you can see that it's only giving me that record. Okay, so if I enter the blank search, so it give me all. So you can search uh, with any fields here. Okay, now let's do the modification. Okay, let's uh, select this particular active records okay and if i click on modify user it takes me to this modify form page where i can see all the existing records now let's say i want to modify the country from india to us okay now i click on modify okay so it give me the status this user modification status is successful okay so now i close now I refresh the search once again. If I open this once again in the modify user, as you can see, the country value has been changed here. If I click on cancel, it will take me to the search page. So now this is a modification operation. Now let's check the disable operation. First of all, we put a condition like we cannot disable the record which is already disabled. Okay, so let's check that one. So I select the one of the disabled record. Okay. Now I try to click on disable user. Okay. Let's see. Okay. See what is the status it's showing. Selected record is already disabled. So our validation is working. Now I click on close and let's uh, disable one active records. So we have this active records. I selected this. Now if I click on disable. Okay. So it says this user termination status is successful. Now close. If I refresh the table. You see that record has been disabled so far this project okay so every part of this project and the use cases are working here properly okay so if i click on the back button it takes me to the home page okay so this is the complete applications a sample applications that we uh, built here so in your requirements this can be any type of application any operations you can invoke or include in uh, this way in oie so in the next video, sorry. okay. So, so in the next video, I'll be starting with a new project, okay? This project two, where I'll be showing that how we can customize the OIM uh, um, forms, the OIM forms like the application instance form or catalog forms, etc. So I'll be starting with the application instance form. So there I'll be showing that how we can customize that application form using ADF. For example, how we can add an LOV, the LOV which gives me the data uh, from another source. Okay, so normally we can add LOV from a lookup. That is a uh, easy uh, way to add a lookup. But let's say uh, the values are there in our database, and the queries are quite, quite complex, and that query should give me uh, the list of values data. Okay, so how we can add a list of value, list of value which uh, has a custom source of data. Also, I'll be showing that how we can add a dropdown and the dependent fields. For example, if I select something under the dropdown, it will enable me other fields and their data. 
okay so i will be covering all of this into the next project so thank you for watching my videos bye